hey, it's run. You're you're live. That's not supposed to be green then. No, it's supposed to be red. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, red, okay. red is red is running. Red is good. Red is running. <laughs> so it's um, we we're, we're actually using the Wi-Fi, which up until this point on oh, my right. older phone yeah. never worked. Okay. It uses the Wi-Fi spot. Okay. Yeah. It's not what really appropriate for me to get
Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I'm glad you're here this morning. We have a special day this morning. Uh, the second time that I can remember, we celebrate both sacraments on the same day. So what a, what a blessed day. Uh, we're thankful to those that can watch online if they need to. So let's pray and thank God for this wonderful day. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for your presence here. Lord, it's not by accident that any of us... ...worship you. Thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Thank you for the technology we have to go out onto the internet. And Lord, I pray that, that you would keep all those connections strong throughout this service. Lord, I pray that we wouldn't just go through the motions this morning. It's kind of a dreary, rainy day that you have given us. That is the day you have given us, and we rejoice in it. So engage our minds, engage our hearts. Speak to us in our inner disciples in your world. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Psalm 30 is calling us to worship. Ken is our lay reader today. I invite you to stand and it will be on the screen and let's be called to worship with Psalm 30. Together. I will exalt you, Lord, for you has you me. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. Sing to the Lord, all you godly ones. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping lasts through the night, but joy comes with the morning. When I was prosperous, I said, Nothing can stop me now. Your favor, O Lord, made me as secure as a mountain. Then you turn away from me, and I was shattered. I cry out to you, O Lord. I beg the Lord for mercy, saying, What will you gain if I die, if I sink into the grave? Can my dust bring You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy, that, that I might sing praises to you and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Please remain standing and join together in praise. And you can greet one another as we get ready. Greetings.
we make a confession of, of faith, kind of a synopsis or a, a gathering of, of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and, and then we speak and say, this is one of the things that we stand on, one of the things that we believe. And from the old Belgian confession, they put this thing together, and we can, we can speak with them. Yes, this is what we believe. Together. We all believe with the heart and confess with the mouth that there is only invisible, immutable, infinite, almighty, perfectly wise, just, good, and the overflowing fountain of all good. Now let us gather together and take our our wretchedness before the Lord and confess our sins that we might uh, share together in the declaration. <laughs> Let's pray silently. of Jesus' life were done for God's glory and your benefits. Listen to the truth of this old hymn and let it fill your heart with joy and forgiveness. Living, Jesus loved us. Dying, Jesus saved us. Buried, Jesus carried our sins away. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Until that glorious day, live freely and forgiven in Christ. That all those forgiven and free in Christ shout Amen. 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 of Maverick James Mahaffey. And come on up, girls. You can come up and, and sit right here in the, the front pew. Maverick James Mahaffey is the son of Drew and Lindley Mahaffey, grandson of, of Kevin and Tammy Kramer, and also grandson of Jim and Shirley Mahaffey, and the great-grandson of Roy and Ray to come forward as we sing. We're going to sing a, a song in two parts. We're going to sing the first verse as they come forward. And then uh, later on, we'll sing the second verse of Baptized in Water. So come on up, you three. And let's sing.
By the act of baptism, a person becomes a part of the visible church. For it is a sign and a seal of the covenant of grace for believers and their children. And as you, as we talked earlier, but as a reminder for the rest of you, in our tradition, in our Presbyterian tradition, in the Evangelical Presbyterian Church, the emphasis on this baptism is really upon these two and the vows that they are going to take to raise Maverick. to come alongside and su support them. So the emphasis here is uh, that he is included in the body of Christ. He is included in the community of faith. But that doesn't mean he's saved. Maverick will have to come and he will have to understand the gospel. He will have to confess his sins and confess Christ as Lord for himself. And there's nothing magical when I put the water on him. It's a symbol for us to see that he's included. And they will bow to raise him to know the Lord, and you will bow to help them support along the way. Sound good? All right. I'm going to ask you your bows. Uh, first, Do you claim God's covenant promises and benefits for your child? And by faith, do you look to the Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of your child as you do your own? Do you now unreservedly dedicate your child to God? And do you promise by relying on God's power and grace through the Holy Spirit to live an exemplary life before your child? Do you commit yourself to pray with and for your child and to teach your child the scriptures and the great articles of our faith in Jesus Christ? And finally, do you promise to use every means provided by God, including faithful participation in the life of the church? Taken, and we talked about this the other day, the importance of, of, of thinking those through and, and seeking to raise him. And here's the amazing thing. You're not on your own to do this. This group will be with you and supporting you as well. So I pray that the Lord would bless you and Maverick as you faithfully strive by the power of the Holy Spirit. church, do you, the members of this congregation, acting for yourselves, and on behalf of the whole body of Christ, assume responsibility with these parents for the spiritual nurture of this child? You can do better than that. Yeah. All right. Do you commit yourself to set a godly example before this child, and to provide as far as you are able all that is necessary that this child may one day confess Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, do you? Yes. Okay. I, I always say it as a joke, but in complete seriousness. Great. Um, ask God how he's calling you to support not only Maverick, but other children that you've made that commitment to and, and promised to help come alongside Father, thank you for these um, these promises that have been made. And, and Lord, we know that without the power of your Holy Spirit, we can't keep promises um, on our own. But your Holy Spirit will lead and guide us and, and, and draw us to do that. So I pray for, for Drew and Lindley. Um, I pray for them as they raise this young man, that he would know you, that he would call upon your name, that he would... Lord, that has said, yes, we support this couple. We come alongside them to encourage and to help. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. If he will.
let me, I'm going to take it from you here. The water's warm. I got it as hot as I can so that it wouldn't be cold. It should be warm right now. Let's flip it. Yep. Maverick James Mahaffey, child of the covenant, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this awesome little guy with an even awesomer name. Lord, I, I pray that uh, promises that have been made, thank you for the blessing of this church. Thank you for the blessing of this sacrament. Lord, lead and guide this little one. Lead him um, that he may uh, tell others about you. And, and thank you. Thank you, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So if it's all right with you, while we sing, I'll take them out and show them to everybody. So uh, we're going to sing verses 2 and 3, and you all... For good or for ill. <laughs> but it is a good one, Maverick. And um, you're part of us. We're going to help you grow. We're going to help you grow and know the Lord. And that when you cry like that and call upon Him, He is your help. So I'm going to pray with you guys one more time. Okay? Lord God, thank you. Thank you for this family. I just pray, Lord, your blessing all over them. I pray that you would provide for them everything they need, Lord. Um, and, and Lord, that you would get the glory and honor in their life. Thank you for this time and this day in Jesus' name. Amen. I have something for you from the church. Uh, following the service, we have. Uh, Cupcakes and, and cake. And, and to his family and, and celebrate and, and praise God with us. Oh, I forgot about you guys. <laughs> you did such a good job. Yeah, so wasn't that neat? Okay, so we saw and, and, and uh, we saw promises being made that, that he would go. There's a string on my. All right, so you you can help him grow too. Oh, on your shirt. Oh, on my shirt. Oh, yeah, it's for the microphone. Yeah, good, good call. No. 
But yeah, that's where the microphone is. <laughs> so you guys can help him grow too. You can be like older sisters to him. What do you think? How still they've been. And Lord, I pray that they would also grow up to know the Lord. And, and Lord, to follow him from, from now till they're um, grown up. And Lord, to help others along the way. Thank you for this day in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys, the baskets are over there. birthday to you as well. I'm going to invite you to uh, turn in your Bibles to Psalm chapter 3. Psalm chapter 3 in your Bibles. A little eight verse psalm. And uh, I will encourage you to keep it open as we Context in which it's written. So let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Lord, thank you for the kids. Thank you that on this, this day of celebrating Lindley's birthday, that we can celebrate a young child that will be growing to know the Lord and growing to. other kids. Lord, continue to, to lead and guide them as they grow. Thank you for those that are in the nursery with them, that are in the Sunday school classroom, that have been in the preschool with them, that will be in the Bible school classrooms with them. Thank you. Now as we turn to your word, Lord, I do pray the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are my rock, you are my redeemer. And I pray that you would speak to your people. Lord, speak to them a word of encouragement. And how when we trust in you, Lord, we're not only secure eternally, but Lord, you will sustain us through every step of every day. Speak to our hearts this morning from your word. Not the things that I have to say, Lord, but what you have to say to me and through your word. Help me to boldly proclaim your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Psalm chapter 3. You will see in your Bibles that it says, A psalm of David when he fled from his son Absalom. Hear the word of the Lord. O Lord. Him. But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the tens of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw, break the teeth. Again, keep that open so you can refer back to it. Last week, we looked at how jealousy caused King Saul to be chasing after David to overthrow him and, and, and in his life. And we looked at David's psalm that inspired by the Holy Spirit, he wrote in that situation, Psalm 34. Well, today we see how ambition, ungodly, It's in 2 Samuel chapter 15, and in 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 10, 
it specifically says that Absalom is sending out secret messages throughout the land of Israel. He pronounces himself, he declares himself king in Hebron. And when David finds out, now David is the rightful king. And David is ruling from the capital city of Jerusalem. Him that you might want to read. But when David finds out that he has declared himself king, David and all of his people and all of his army and their families flee from the capital of Jerusalem. David is on the run again, this time from his own son. He's in a place called Mahanaim, and that's the setting for Psalm 3, a psalm of David, when he fled from his son Absalom. that I didn't read. S-E-L-A-H. Selah, Selah. It's a Hebrew word that nobody in the history of the world knows what it means. They did at the time. I mean nobody after knows what it means. It has always been speculated that it's some sort of a musical term. My own speculation is that it's what we call in music a fermata, a whole. Then you come to the end of the phrase and you hold What we do know is the word S-E-L-A-H is in there three different times, breaking this psalm into three sections. First section is two verses. Second section is two verses. Last section is four verses. reminds you and reminds me that we can rest in Christ because he is the victor who rescues us. You and I can rest in Christ because he is the victor who rescues us. Section 1 is verse Lord, and it's capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's the divine name of God, the covenantal relationship name of the Creator God. He's saying, Lord, and in verse 2 he says, they're mocking me, Lord. They're saying, God will not deliver him. Didn't we just hear that mock a few weeks ago? The very same one. On Monday, Thursday, in Matthew 27, Jesus is on the cross and the people are mocking. They say, he trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. By the Lord Jesus. How many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Could, could not those words, have not those words, been spoken by many Christian witnesses and missionaries throughout history? Think of all the stories you've heard about Christian ministries that missionaries that have gone into hostile territories, and they would say rightfully with this psalm, how many my foes, how many rise up against me. Christian life. Now, I don't like this, and I don't want to tell you this, but I have to, because the scripture tells us this. Paul says, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to young Timothy, in 2 Timothy 3.12, Everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. David is feeling that. And then 
have experienced this. We see this more and more. To be faithful to God's word, to be faithful to the Lord, we will be going against the grain of society. And we will be persecuted. We will identify with David and with Jesus. How many my foes? Well, let me tell you, if the psalm ended there, it'd be pretty depressing. But there's two more sections. Suffering. You can rest. God has you. God will rescue you. But. What a great word. In Ephesians, it says, You were dead in your trespasses and sins, but God. It's a contrast word. Many are my foes. There are people coming after me. But in contrast, Lord, you are a shield around us. Last week in Psalm 34, he said, The angel of the Lord, the presence of God in camps, in circles, circuits around us. And today he's saying, in addition to that, you're a shield. How awesome. How, you, how encouraging. He says, Lord, you are the one that is my glory. You are the one that lifts my head. And when I call on top, in between the Ark of the Covenant, in the city of Jerusalem, in the, the temple, on the holy mountain. He answers, but think about today. Jesus promised before he died rose again and ascended to heaven, that when he did so, he would send to be with those who trust in him. Saying, I cry out, he hears me, and he answers. Brother and sister, in Christ, he hears and he answers. He is with you. Be encouraged. And in the final section, the last four verses, verses 5 through 8, imagine the stress of the fact that he is still the king. He's a leader. Imagine just a little bit of the emotional stress. It's not King Saul trying to kill him this time. It's my own son. He's declared, my foes are against me. They're mocking me. They're wishing for my woe. And in the midst of that, look at verse 5. The word sustains me. The Hebrew word translated sustain is the Hebrew word samach. And sustain is a fine uh, translation, you could also say upholds, supports, not going to let you go. Morris says this, a person trusting fully in God can sleep under the most difficult of circumstances. And the disciples are terrified, sleeping in the boat. David says, you hold me up, Lord. You sustain me. You support me. I can sleep. I can wake up. And verse 6, though there are thousands that assail me, I can sleep because I have no fear. Because you are with me. Verse 6. talked a lot about imperatives. Imperatives were commands. And I said they were plural commands. Things that all of us as a group, you do this thing. And it was David inspired by the Holy Spirit saying, here's what you all should do. 
Well, in this case, the imperatives are singular, and they're directed to the Lord from David. And the first imperative is the Hebrew word that is translated arise. me, Lord. And then the next one is deliver me. It's the Hebrew word Hoshea, from which we get Hoshea, not save now, Hosanna. It's the word from which we get the name Yeshua, which in English is Jesus, translated deliver or rescue me. David saying, I know you, Lord, we're in a relationship, and I'm asking battles. It looks like there's more imperatives. Strike my enemies, break their teeth. But in the Hebrew, it's more of a statement. The English Standard Version and the King James translated more of a statement. He says, Lord, this is what you do. You strike all my enemies on the cheek, you break the teeth of the wicked. Lord, you are the one doing all the work. And then just in case we didn't catch it, he repeats it again in, in verse 8. Deliver, call Shiah, rescue me. Literally in the Hebrew it says, to the Lord, Hoshia. Translated, David saying, God, you are the one doing all of the saving by all of your grace. Sounds like the New Testament. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not yourselves, it is the gift of God, and by works so that no one can boast. And friends, that was true for David. And it's true for us. So what, Pastor Jefferson? Thanks for teaching me a couple Hebrew words that I'll never remember. So what is this? Do you feel the encouragement? Do you feel the encouragement? I'm trying to come and take your throne from you. But we all have foes. Maybe it's that guy at work always mocking your faith. Maybe it's that relative or neighbor. Ah, oh, where's your God now that you trust in so much? I remember a college professor in the one class I took that he, he said one day, he goes, ah, oh, there's just some things that are hard for me to believe, like people being born of a virgin. And he looked right at me. I would hardly call that persecution. But we feel this all the time. We feel the foes and our world around us is hostile to the message of Christ. And the messages of the people we still hold on to that faith. I hope you're encouraged. Because in a broken, sinful, dark, horrific world, what we go through, we will be tempted to give up. David is saying, don't give up. The Lord has us. The Lord sustains us. The Lord will take care of us. So I would encourage you to read Psalm 3 and read it again. I, I would encourage you to memorize Psalm 3. Whenever I say something like that, I always get this. Oh, I can't. Field or Brett Butler had a 311 batting average. <laughs> if you really press me, I could probably give you all the lyrics to Weird Al Yankovic's Amish Paradise. I can tell you what kind of truck the Baltimore Colts left Baltimore and moved to Indianapolis in. All that stuff's up here. I can memorize scripture. And so can you. So imagine the joy. In the King James, there's, there's the word soul, and it's there in Hebrew. 
He's actually saying, my nefesh, that's the Hebrew word for the core, inner being of your soul. They are saying to my soul, your God will not take care of you. To your own soul. I'll be quiet, soul. From the Lord comes deliverance. The Lord sustains me. You are a shield around me, O Lord. In our church, be encouraged. He promised his Holy Spirit. Now, the promise was only for those who trust. Psalm 1 is very clear that, that the way of the wicked, the way that, that say, you know what, I don't need the Lord and all that kind of stuff, Pastor Jefferson. I'll do it myself. Psalm 1 is very clear. The way of the person against the Lord, the wicked will perish. But he says the Lord watches And then he sends the Holy Spirit, and we can claim all these promises and all this encouragement, and we can walk through the foes that are coming at us daily and say, I can sleep. The Lord sustains me. I can rest. Oh, friends, be encouraged. David wrote this, inspired by the Holy Spirit, to encourage you and to encourage me, to run to him, to seek refuge in him. And when you do, to find rest in him. He is upholding you. He is supporting you. You and I can rest in Christ. Because he is the victor who rescues us. My prayer is that everyone will hear it and understand the fact that, that you sustain us, you hold us. Each one of us are going through all kinds of different things. There's different foes coming at us left and right. Sometimes the foe is our own sin. Lord, I pray that we give it to you, we confess it, turn it to you, and then, Lord, you, you take it away and get all the glory, be the lifter of our salvation. If your Holy Spirit had made it make sense in their mind and their hearts, and I pray that they would do what your message says. Turn, repent, and believe the good news. Believe that what makes us right in a relationship with you, Lord, is the sacrifice made by Jesus on the cross. And that as they trust in you, Lord, that they would know without a shadow of doubt they're your son, you're, they're your daughter, that you are sustaining them. Lord, I know there are those here and there are those watching that, that have understood this relationship. They've been in that relationship, what you call eternal life, now and forever. They've been in that relationship for a long time. Encourage us even deeper today. Even deeper than you sustain. Whether it's our own sin, as we come to you and confess it, you will forgive us, Lord, and you will sustain us and you will hold us. Thank you. Thank you for a love that we only can catch a glimpse of the beginning of. A love that loves us so much that you would send Jesus. Jesus, holy name. Amen. As is our custom on the first Sunday of the month, we respond to God's word by coming to his table. This table is not the table of Hanover Church. It's not the table of our denomination, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church. To eat and drink and commune with him. So I would invite you to come to this table, be nourished, 
Receive grace. You've heard me say it over and over. I'll say it again. It's a, it's a sign pointing us to the reality of communion with God. When you cross that bridge and you see the Kenny Wood arrow, that's not Kenny Wood itself. It's a huge sign pointing you to the reality of Kenny. touch the bread. We'll taste the bread. If I was pouring the juice in the cup, I could hear it. Feel it if I were to drop it on myself. <clears throat> Sensible signs pointing to a reality of a communion with the Lord God. Calling all table. Be filled with the bread of life. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you. You didn't have to give us the, the baptism. You didn't have to give us the communion, but you did. Something that, that we can see and taste and touch and feel. Point us to a reality of a connection with you now and forever. Your grace so none of us can boast. Reminding us that we are connected one to another, not only here in this room, but throughout the body of Christ, throughout the world. And in a very way that we don't quite fully understand, we're connected to brothers and sisters in Christ who have gone on before us, who are with you in the grace. your name, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to ask some of the elders to come forward to uh, serve as we pass back, hold on to the bread, and then we'll give you the
On the night that he was arrested, Jesus took the bread and he broke it and gave it the gave thanks to the Lord and gave Likewise, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. Death of the risen Lord until he comes again. Amen. Let's stand and sing in Christ alone. Right now, um, did anybody get an update from Jessica before she left? All right. Oh, Bob, what, what did they say? Yeah, he's, um, Greg's still in intensive care, but he's sitting up for an hour. Uh, things are looking a little better. So, uh, looks like his recovery is progressing. They want to get up and start walking around and get his blood pressure coming back up. Um, things are starting to look Praise God. He had emergency surgery for a So let's pray that that clears up. Pray hard. Mm -hmm. Wonderful.
And the other thing I would ask you to pray for is uh, Marie Godfrey, who has been with us many Sundays, is here from Arizona, uh, caring for her sister, Audrey, and her sister is, is most likely going to a hospice facility. And she asks us to just pray for that whole process. Let's go to the Lord. I will include a time if you have something on your heart you would like to pray out loud, just feel free to do so. That you are with us, that we can rest in you. Lord, there have been many in, in your congregation here and, and throughout our community that have been battling with sicknesses of different kinds, stomach viruses going around, different things. So, Lord, we ask for your healing. We ask for your healing and your mercy upon people. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in Greg's life. And, and Lord, um, we lift him up to you. And we ask for your continued healing upon him. We thank you for Marie, who has uh, been worshiping with us for the past year. And Lord, uh, this difficult time, she cares for her sister. We pray for her to be sustained through that by you. Lord God, we, we have other things on our hearts and minds. Maybe we want to mention them out loud. Maybe we don't. Would you hear now any concerns of your people? And we thank you for your care, Lord, for those that were running this morning. You know that's special in, in my heart as well, Lord. Thank you. Pray the runners will run for your glory. Lord, we pray for our preschool and thank you for that ministry. And as uh, it comes to a Lord, we pray for wisdom for our leaders on all levels. Lord, pray for men and women that, that know you and fear the Lord. Pray for those who serve our country. Lord, we pray for missionaries around the world. We thank you, Lord. We pray for the body of Christ here in this community and the upcoming Vacation Bible School, that you would provide all the helpers we need that you would provide all the students, and that you would be honored and glorified in that week in June. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Please hear us now as we... Thy will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Another way we respond to the word of God is by giving of our, our time, our resources, and our abilities, and the resources that he's given us in the first place. So I would invite the ushers to come forward. And
gifts that have been given. I pray that you would provide for every need of your people. Pray that these gifts would be used that the message of Jesus may go out throughout Western Pennsylvania, throughout your world, and that you may get all the honor and glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. I don't want to take a whole lot of time, but if you look at your hand over... time with the cupcakes afterwards. Uh, I will be leaving tomorrow afternoon through Wednesday for the Basics Pastors Conference at Parkside Church, which is right beside um, where Jaga Lake used to be. Jaga Lake was the park that Parkside was beside. Um, so if there is any kind of emergencies in the next couple of days, please contact one of our elders. Um, Josh will be leading Bible study on Tuesday night at, at 5. Thursday. Which if you don't know where that is, it's right beside Ionetics. Well, if you don't know where Ionetics is. Old 22. 6.30 p.m. Bring up lawn chair. We'll sing some worship songs. We'll pray together. Uh, with whoever gathers that night. I've sent out invitations all over the, the tri-state area. The Walk for Life is uh, Saturday at Moon High School. A number of us are on Team Hanover. And if you'd like to support us, um, we would still appreciate that. Uh, I know Beth's walk, walking, collecting money, I'm walking, Dana, the Scots, different people. And our, our, our team is in fourth place. I'd like to see us stay there or go higher. So let's um, continue to... Uh, support that great ministry. Uh, you can see the other announcements on there. Probably the only thing I'm going to mention right now is our preschool. This is really cool. They planted pumpkins up behind the, the playground. So in the fall, we should have a most sincere pumpkin patch. And um, so just to tell you that they're there, if you happen to be playing up there, Don't be like me and cut down anything living. There's, uh, there's pumpkins up there, and um, be aware of that. Any other announcements that need to be made this morning? All right. Our closing song is a great one. Let's stand and sing Shine, Jesus, Shine. <laughs>
died of Christ that, that Veda took out of here and rest in him. Rest in him no matter what foes are coming uh, around us or upon us this week. Rest, rest in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I receive the benediction. Lord bless you and keep you. Or make a space to show Amen. Go in peace. Thank you.